Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Brockton Rotary. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and the flags over here in the corner? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Steve, are you prepared? Do you want me to... Uh... Oh, Doc, come on up for our invocation, please. So some, some thoughts about uh, having this meeting in a school where uh, education is, is, is featured. The word education, ed, from the Latin word educere, means to bring out from. And that is what the teachers here are trying to do with the students. They're trying to bring out what's already in them, okay, and reinforce that. In, in most religious traditions, God is seen as love. And we know from, the, uh, from that musical, uh, love isn't love until you give it away. And when you give away love, it's not that you have less available. Paradoxically, the more you give, the more you have. And I think the same thing is true with education. Knowledge isn't knowledge, in a sense, unless you share it with someone. And again, meeting in a school, the place where this takes place on a daily basis, we are privileged to be here and have our meal uh, w with, with these uh, fine people and, and uh, the students. So thank, thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. And uh, may our conversation uh, at, at these uh, tables uh, be uh, enlightening and uh, a sign of your presence among us. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, President Good afternoon. Can you hear me? <laughs> now I'll continue eating. Uh, again, I'd like to thank you to coming this afternoon to Brockton Rotary. Uh, do we have any visiting Rotarians? I know we have one guest here. Uh, I'd like to introduce our district governor came this afternoon, Russell Bertrand. Thank you for coming, Russell. Any other uh, guests, visiting Rotarians, I mean? Very uh, visiting Rotarian, Mr. Mark Lindy. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, and we have a guest. Yes, yes please. This is uh, Tony Branch. Tony is my colleague on the Southeastern School Committee. He took the place of Wayne McAllister after he passed, and he's our newest member of the Southeastern School Committee. Brock McRacy. Thank you, Tony. That's chairman of the Diversity Commission in Brock. Nice. All right, and no other guests or uh, visiting Rotarians I see? Yes. Oh, we always have David Zod driver. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I know Nick, I know we want to try to get an update on the basketball tournament, and I don't see Nick or Dan here, so we're going to have to graze over that one, and uh, hopefully we'll get some information and see how well we did with the basketball tournament from the holidays. We ran out of popcorn. Well, we ran out of popcorn. I know that. We ran out of hot dogs. <laughs> I think that was directed at you, Tom. Uh, we had our Rotary Makeup Breakfast this morning. We had about four or five people there. Uh, good little attendance for anybody that's looking to do makeups. We had a couple more coming up in February if you are interested in doing any makeups. Uh, February 11th is the Pre-Pets and President's Mid-Year Meeting coming up on February 11th. 
and that's going to be at White's of Westport. And I believe it's on a Saturday. It's mm -hmm. probably about 8 a.m. to about noontime. Uh, so people that I know that I got to sign up for that, and I don't think Nick's going to be in town for pre-pets. I know Richard, I think you're here if you're interested in going because you're right after Nick. Uh, if it's something you want to go and learn a little bit about, more than welcome to sign up for that. But that's coming up February 11th. Uh, next week's lunch. We will be having lunch next week at Thony Lee. So our return will be to Thony Lee next week. Um, right now we're working on a program. We're in discussions with Ted Reinstein from Chronicle to see if he can come be a guest speaker. Uh, he has a difficult time getting out there in the day sometimes. He's more of an evening guy, but Richard's working on that. We'll see what we can do with that, and uh, we'll let you guys know soon on what's going on with that. Uh, we also, April 1st is coming up quick, folks. We're already almost done with January, is the pancake breakfast. Uh, I had spoken to Kim Holland uh, a week ago, and Kim is going to try to find out about... Uh, providing the food. I gave him last year's information and inventory about the food, so hopefully we have the opportunity to uh, get some food there. Uh, I'll be uh, in touch with all you folks about sponsorships for the pancake breakfast very soon. Thank you. That's great words of wisdom. Maybe I'll get yours today. <laughs> He's going to solicit you for a donation oh, for the pancake presses. Oh, yeah, for an ad. You want to sponsor your, uh, your company there. Um, so, so another big important piece for us tomorrow for our, one of our true fellow Rotarians, Jim Morris. We do have the memorial service tomorrow for Jim. Uh, it will be at the Bay Point Rehabilitation Center where Jim worked. Uh, it starts at 4 p.m. I believe uh, we have 15 people that have committed to go already. Betty got me that number today. Betty, thank you for tracking that. Um, if you're interested in going, please let Betty know. We're trying to give Bay Point a head count. Uh, one of the things we might do is we think we might even pay for the memorial service there from a Rotary Club standpoint because Jim is just, again, true Rotarian, couldn't meet a nicer guy, uh, a very disappointing loss, uh, mostly for his family and this community and, and also Rotary, but we'll miss Jim daily. Um, yes, Elaine? I don't know the whole format, Elaine. All I was notified is they're having a memorial service for Jim at Bay Point. So I'm not sure. They're trying to limit the number and, and people that come, but they invited us as guests, as Rotarians, because Jim was in the club. Other than that, I don't know much about it, except that it starts at 4 p.m. and we get 15 people committed to go. If anyone would like to go and you haven't let Betty know, please let her know now before you leave for lunch so we can get that number to them. It's, uh, it'd be helpful. Um, Betty, you have any uh, updates on anything with community service announcements that you want to give us? All right, no community service updates. Uh, at this time, I'd like to give the district governor just a few words uh, of wisdom for us as well. We appreciate you coming down for our lunch today, and come on up here, Bill. Uh, Russ. Russ? That's okay. Bill Tennant. That's, yeah, that's okay, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Brian. Great. So anyway, well, thanks, Brian, for the time. I'm only going to take 20, 30 minutes, that's all. So <laughs> I, that's, that's an old joke. They teach you that at uh, District Governor's School. But anyway, I just wanted to, um, we're having a great year. Um, the foundation giving's right on track, and where we should be, and Polio Plus, those things are all going well uh, as far as contributions. I did want want to uh, suggest and promote the uh, multi-district conference April 28, 29, and 30th where we're going to have Rotary International President John Germ speak on Friday evening. It's going to be down in Providence at the Providence Convention Center and the Omni Hotel is the host hotel. We have two other great speakers, one's a gentleman by the name of Michael Angelo Caruso motivational speaker, uh, just great, talks about your elevator speech and how to engage somebody in uh, 15 seconds or less. And then uh, 
Saturday evening is going to be Lauren Templeton from Templeton Mutual Funds. She's going to be the keynote speaker, going to speak about how she was raised around the four-way test and that sort of thing. And then Sunday morning is going to be the youth conference with a GSE team from Australia is going to be there and uh, the youth exchange uh, kids, the uh, students. So anyway, I hope you're all there and uh, thank you for the time. And uh, it's, it's a great facility, a great million dollar meal. Thank you very much. I have one to thank our school and our students for hosting us, uh, two for our district governor coming here, and uh, three for my colleague from Southeastern for joining us today. No, thanks, Mark. <laughs> Russell. So just a good uh, donation here for the invitation from Mark last week when I saw him at the Bridgewaters Club, and then from Amy to... Uh, uh, go, uh, good work she's doing with the uh, symphony there, so I hope that plays out. But the truth be told, my calendar says it's open, but I have to check with a higher source at home to see if it really is open anyway. The actual so, boss. The boss, right. <laughs> the, so anyway, thank you. Thank you, Russell. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, I have a dollar here in memory of uh, Jim Morris. Jim Morris is uh, the type of person that I come to Rotary for because he is a mentor. He lived his life uh, to the fullest. He was one of the most genu genuine and generous uh, and thoughtful people I've ever met. And he will be deeply missed. No, very true. <laughs> Mr. Cooney. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Mr. Fournette. Three dollars uh, once uh, for Jim Morris. Uh, I worked with him. He was the head of the Oxford School of Bay Point. Always had time for me. I dropped by, say hi, he dropped in for me. And you and I met with him. I think we had breakfast with him. Left, so it really hit me hard. Yeah. Just as Joe, echo what Joe said, just a real fine human being. I have five dollars in memory of Jim. <laughs> I was a sponsor on the to be his sponsor. He was an incredible human being. I never saw him without a smile on his face. And if you asked him how he felt, he'd tell you terrific. And he was so generous to myself and to my husband in all the years that my husband was at Bay Point. And I know that Jim always bent over backwards for any Rotarian or their family who was at Bay Point. He was sorely going to be missed on many different Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> Mr. Tom Sampson. I read the uh, Enterprise the other day that Tony Alameda died. He was a longtime Rotarian from Brockton. And I didn't know Tony. This is a dollar remembrance of him. And that we're talking about the pancake breakfast. He averaged over 50, 50 placement ads a year. I know he did. Now, Bill Callahan's got a new goal, folks. <laughs> Mr. Gary Oman. I have two happy bucks here today. The first one uh, is for Southeastern and the students that put on a great meal today. And, and the other one, frankly, is, is a happy, uh, a thankful one uh, uh, to, to Joe McClure for his invocation today. That was fantastic. Thank you. Good job. Yeah. yeah, that was a great invocation, Joe. Mr. Lutz. Yeah, I have a few. Um, we, we all have gym stories. The, the, uh, the one that I think of is uh, after one of his bouts uh, with cancer, he was recovering and he had just gotten back with the club. We were doing the pancake breakfast. And I pulled up to Massasoit at five minutes of six. There was already one car there. Guess who it was? We threw the last bag of trash into the dumpster at like 12 15, 12 30. See you later, Jim. He was the last guy out of there. And that was what our first time there. We found we didn't have uh, everything to do the mixed pancakes. He went out last minute, called food sources, got pancakes down there. Like, just an amazing guy. And um, I just keep hearing more and more stories about him. So he will be sorely missed. Uh, another dollar for uh, all the great students here and, and the uh, great meal that we had. Thanks very much. Um, and the latest in the saga of the big red van. Um, <laughs> 
So you've all followed the tra trails and tribulations of that thing. Um, Sunday night, I was in Maine with uh, one of my sons, and I got a phone call. Uh, Annika said, Dad, somebody stole the van. I said, what are you talking about, somebody stole the van? I said, somebody stole the van. Mom told me to call you. I said, well, where's, where's Mom? She said, She's on the phone with the police, dial 911. Somebody stole the van. So out of our driveway Sunday night, Somebody with obviously exquisite taste in automobiles <laughs> uh, took the van out of there, and, and it is not the easiest thing to drive, as this thief soon found out. He sideswiped two cars on the way down Augustine Street, and uh, Brockton people being what they are, it's not like the you know getaway driver, you know, oh, we've got to call the police. No, this woman chased him down, pulled up to him at the light, banging on the window. Hey, you hit my car. So uh, that spooked him, and he ended up ditching it. We got it back a half an hour later with a little bit of body damage. So. <laughs> I'm glad everybody could come here today uh, it, to our wonderful school and, and see what our wonderful students are capable of. I had a, a few honors in my life. One was being president of this club, and the other one was being elected to the school committee in 2008. I love this place. It is a joy to come here every time I come here, and you can see why. So. Rather than me tell you all about it, we have our superintendent of schools, Lou Lopes, who was here before I got here, who does a great job, and uh, this school has just grown and prospered under his leadership, and uh, just want to recognize my new colleague, Tony Branch, who just joined me on the school committee. Wayne McAllister, unfortunately, passed away last year, and uh, I'm, we're fortunate enough to have Tony Branch uh, taking his place. 62% of the kids that go here are from Brockton, so Brockton is a, a key component of the nine-member communities. So without further ado, Lou Lopes. Thank you, and uh, thanks for all those kind words about the school, and, and uh, the culinary kids do a great job, uh, as you know, and, and we love having you here every year. Um, um, much like you, we're a, we're a service community, we're a service school. Uh, a lot of what we do is community service, and uh, um, if you haven't had a chance to tour the facilities and, and see some of the exciting things that our kids are doing, um, I, I encourage you to do that. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, do it, uh, you can do it anytime, you know, just, you know, give me a call, say, hey, you know, I have a friend up from, from town, wants to come and see the school, see what you're all about. Uh, we're, in Massachusetts, we're really lucky because vocational education in Massachusetts is, is by far the best in the nation. And uh, in a lot of states have tried to model what we do uh, with limited success. And one of the things that makes us successful is we have, uh, we have somewhat uh, a t our own autonomy and our, our 10 member school committee uh, govern us and, and make decisions and, and, and because of that we're able to uh, keep pace with with the economy and, and, and the changing landscape and, and changing jobs. Um, <clears throat> I want to share with you kind of a, a quick story. I, I serve on the executive uh, board for the Commonwealth Corporation. Uh, for those of you not familiar, Commonwealth Corporation is a basically the, uh, we take money from the state and we just give it back to businesses, uh, about 65 million dollars a year. And um, I, was, uh, I was with um, uh, Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, uh, uh, Secretary Ron Walker, yesterday, actually. And we were talking about um, basically a new strategic plan for the Commonwealth Corporation. Um, unemployment rate is down to 2.9 percent, as many of you probably know. Um, uh, yet the um, unfilled jobs are over 5 percent. And, um, and, and what, what uh, is probably no surprise, it's not, it's not that uh, there's not enough jobs out there, there's tons of jobs out there, there's not enough skilled workers uh, for those jobs. And um, <clears throat> so mo they keep asking us, what can we do, what can we do to kind of expand on not just the soft skills, the things like showing up to work on time, having good work ethic and so forth, but, re but training these people, the, these people that are uh, not just uh, high school youth, but, uh, but adults who are underemployed, who maybe graduated, went, got a four-year degree, and you know, their degree doesn't line up with what employers are looking for. Um, so, um, so one of the things I'm, I'm pleased about is that we're, our biggest growth in the school is with our post-secondary population. Uh, we just got approved. We're adding uh, electrical as a new program. Um, we're adding uh, plumbing. We already, have, we already have seven or eight other adult programs, and that's where you're going to see our biggest growth. Because uh, quite frankly, um, we can't take any more high school kids. Um, um, I mean, I guess that's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, 
This year already, we're, we're, at, we're nearing 1,000 applications uh, for, uh, for eighth grade applications to come in as freshmen. We accept 375. Um, so, so, you know, so, so we're, we're a little bit of a renaissance and that, you know, you know the, the word is out there, it used to be that, uh, that this was kind of the, uh, the hidden gem that no one knew, ab knew about and that's not the case. Uh, but that brings other challenges because there's, um, you know, there, there's kids we want to serve, there's adults we want to serve, and how are we going to do that? So, so we're doing a lot of things through things like dual partnerships with, uh, with, with Kathy and Brockton School Department. We're reaching out to Foxborough, doing another pilot program with them. So there's going to be a lot of, lot of opportunities. Um, I think one of the things that makes us successful is the fact that, um, that we listen to you. We listen to business leaders. In fact, um, under the law, we have to meet with business leaders twice a year, and you tell us what we should be teaching. It's not the other way around. Um, and we adjust um, our curriculum based on what you tell us is the latest technology that's out there. Um, and uh, and, and that, that works for us, and I think that's why, that's why we're so successful. Last year, um, we have something called cooperative education where seniors and in, in some the latter part of the junior year students can go out and work in local companies and earn money during their vocational week. Uh, last year, they, they combined, they earned just under, just over $900,000. Um, and so these are high school kids in the combined earnings. So, so, so these kids are being sought after. In fact, I probably have more, um, unfortunately in some of the programs, I have more, more, I have employers calling us and saying, can you send me three more electricians? And the answer is no, I don't have them, you know. Um, which is kind of, you know, which I guess is a good sign for the economy. And um, I was, I was, um, um, <clears throat> they talked about when they were looking at the unemployment rate yesterday, uh, they look at it regionally, we look at it regionally as well. And I was pleased to see that, that, uh, that Brockton actually wasn't in that high unemployment rate uh, this last quarter. So that, that shows me that, that the greater Brockton area, there's, um, there's some good things going on. And, and that's, that's encouraging. Uh, for the people in this room and, and for us in the education business, because that means more opportunities for our kids. So, um, so, so our our focus um, over the next upcoming years is is to to not only educate uh, high school students, but also the underemployed and unemployed, and getting them getting them um, to be able to either take promotions within their company um, and or and to uh, earn a living wage. Um, you know, as opposed to, there's a lot of people working out there, but, but what they're earning isn't sustaining their, them and them, their families. So, so we're pleased about that. Um, the, the one ask I have is just spread the word uh, about our uh, post-secondary programs. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of the, the, the best deal in, in town. Uh, we're probably a quarter of the price of everyone else. And part of that's because we do get public funding for, even for the adult programs. So, uh, so if you know someone who's looking for a career change, um, you know, have them, have them give us a call. And, and also, um, we, we also do some innovative things with companies that are, maybe they got a new piece of equipment, maybe they need to retrain their staff. Um, we do that all the time as well, so we can run custom programs and so forth for you and your company to help you kind of move, move forward. We did, did something recently with uh, photovoltaics and a local electrical company that wanted to expand and get all their, all their employees trained, all their electricians trained in photovoltaics. And we did a, a program a few years ago that was very successful. Um, and those, those people that took the, their course, they inc increased their hourly wage by um, eight or ten dollars an hour. So that was, that was very, very good for them. And it was good for us as well. Um, so, so that's kind of, you know, kind of all I have to say. Uh, again, um, I'd love to love for you to, to visit. Uh, we, we're, we're involved in a lot of really cool things. Uh, we just we completed uh, a few months ago a tiny house that we built in nine weeks. If you haven't seen that and would like to see it, it's still on our property. Um, it goes goes on uh, on the market for sale next week for twenty five thousand dollars. Or as one student pointed out, for less than the, the cost of his monthly cell phone bill, he can be a, he, he can he can be a homeowner. So your mortgage would be about $125 a month. The post-secondary retraining programs are typically 10 months. Some of them, like the LPN, are longer because of the hours. Um, and then um, uh, other ones, like cosmetology, is a little bit longer because you need 1,000 hours as well. But typically 10 months. Um, most of them start in September and run through May. Uh, although we have culinary and cosmetology are starting in March, uh, the next class. 
Um, and then uh, plumbing starts in September and then electrical starts next January. So they're, they're, they're typically 10 months and the starting times fluctuates a little bit, but, but typically it's September or January. They're, um, so um, half and half. We, we have, we have uh, basically the day programs are the licensed practical nursing, medical assisting, dental assisting, um, those are the day programs. All the other ones typically start at 4 and go 4 to 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. and they're 24 years underemployed. What would that 10 month program cost? So, so for if they live in the if they live in one of our nine communities, it's around $5,000. And we're title with uh, and they they would actually um, because um, because we are accredited, um, they 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 qualify for for um, Pell grants and so forth. And, uh, and, that, and they can throw in kind of their living expenses. So you can actually, um, it's, it's the one, one time, college is the, the, the rare occasion where it's good to not have a lot of money. And if, you can, if, you're, if your income is low and so forth, uh, we, we have a couple of students that are actually, we're paying them for them to come here because, because obviously the government you know, gives us the money and then we, we send it out to them as we draw it down. So, so about 6,000, uh, about five or $6,000 and again, I. Um, the electrical is new, so I don't know that the because we give them all tools and so forth as well, and it's about double that if you're out of district. And the culinary program? Culinary is less. Do you have the? Uh, oh, look, it's, it's all right up there. I think culinary is about three thousand. Is that right? Right now, yeah, right now. There's a special. Absolutely, yeah, after, yeah, 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 I'll tell you, that's why I'm dressed like this. My wife won't let me wear suits to work anymore because I'm usually in the maker space and, uh, and I've, I've destroyed a bunch of them. Okay, okay. We also call it the dog house. If someone has an area in the backyard, they want to they have their own little dog house, they can kind of do that as well. It's actually very nice. It was a great project. I'd love to do it. <laughs> We're also doing a uh, an eco an eco carpentry challenge right now with with some of our students where they they brought a bunch of old used furniture and we have to convert it and retrofit it into something new and it was office furniture and the kids came up with a project where converting it to kids a kid's bedroom and it's pretty pretty cool what they're doing what they're doing with that so we got that going on we have a Adams family set that we're doing for the upcoming musical. Uh, in March, and we always um, you know, a couple of other really fun projects that the kids are doing. Any other questions for Lou? Okay. Quick question: um, Are you finding more kids nowadays compared to maybe 20 years ago that once they graduate here, they continue on to four-year colleges? Yeah, about about 60 percent of our students, 65, I think, was the number last last year percent, are going on to higher education, and that's just because that's what the industry demands now, right? So we have, we have I, I mentioned electrical, we have a lot of kids going on to electrical engineering. We have some kids that are just enrolling in business. Um, we do have kids going right into the apprenticeship unions and so forth. Um, I had a discussion with, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Boilermakers Union. Um, so I had a, I had a discussion with, uh, with, with uh, someone from the, um, um, that, that they just started, restarted the apprenticeship program. And uh, the, the, the hourly wage for Boilermakers are over $45 an hour. And they're just the start of a boom, and they're looking for people. And they said, you know, if they can weld, or even took a welding class, we we teach an evening welding class here. Uh, it's about eight weeks long. You take that class, they'll get you into the apprenticeship program, um, and it's a great career, you know. So so those opportunities, are, but they need those hard skills. You know, you can't. Unfortunately, you know, they don't care about the the bachelor's degree in English. You know, they care about that welding class. Uh, but you need both, and that's that's and so that's one of the things. We're a level one school. Each school is is measured, given levels one to five, based on their academic proficiency, 
and, uh, and for the second year in a, in a row, we're a level one academic school. So, um, so our kids are getting in, in some great colleges, great universities. Um, and you know, particularly in, in our engineering programs, in our legal protective services programs, um, some of our design programs, you need that degree, maybe just an associate's degree, but you need that degree to move on.